Hello everybody and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture we're going to be going over how to use and how to play with arrays. Now an array is basically a data type which can store multiple pieces of data and then at any point you can access those pieces of data by referencing whether by referencing a key. <coughs> now we've never learned or used arrays before so we have to jump into starting how to create an array. An array is, is nothing super special. I mean, you create the variable. So I want to create this variable called array. And now, after the equal sign, I'm going to type the word array without the equals or without the dollar sign, and then an open and close parentheses. Now you've pretty much you've created this array. Now that we've created an array here, we want to we want to learn how to be able to to print or echo out an array. And if we were to just go echo array, you can't because an array is can be multiple types of data. So it can be string, it can be int. It doesn't know. It's a it's an object uh, sort of say, but it's not really an object. Um, so to print an array. Instead of using echo, we're going to use this new function called print underscore r, and then it takes in an array. Um, the r stands for recursive. So what it does, it, it's looping through this array, and it's just it's it's going to show us the key assigned to the value, and then it's going to show that for each every value. So now if we were to go and refresh our page here, we're going to it's going to tell us it's an array and it is empty. <coughs> so to add items to an array, there's multiple ways, but for now we're just going to we're going to fill an array with just some random data. So what we can do, we can put an integer, so 3, a string perhaps. So we'll call it string. And everything is separated by a comma, except for the last piece of data. That there's no comma after that, or you'll get a, a syntax error. Uh, let's put a floating point four and a half. So now, if I were to go and refresh uh, our page here that has the print r statement, we're gonna get the zero is pointed at three, one is pointed at string, and two is pointed at four and a half. Now these 0, 1, 2 are the keys associated with the values. We're going to be able to use these keys in order to dereference the array so we can spit one specific value out just like that. In programming, the first thing of any object or array is going to be 0. We start at 0. We don't start at 1. You're going to have to remember that for later. So, so after we keep adding stuff, it's going to be 0 through 1 to 2 and then 3 up, up to n. So you can practically store as much data as you want here, but you're probably never going to find yourself using them um, in huge situations where you're storing millions of pieces of data. So I'm going to go ahead and comment out this, this print r statement here. And we're just gonna we're gonna look at this page here. We have zero is pointed to three, one is pointed to string, and two is pointed to four point five. Say I wanted to just echo out the string, so it would be our second value in the array, but to to reference it, it's the first key, the first index. So in order to dereference an array like this, we can say echo. And then here we have array, and then after that, we're going to do square brackets. So now that we know each key, so we have 0 is pointed at 3, 1 is at string, and 2 is at 4 and half. So if we wanted to echo out string, we would put a 1 between the two brackets. So that means it's telling, it's telling PHP we want to look at the first index of this array and get its value so that we can echo it out just fine. So now if I refresh the page, we're just going to get string. Simple. And if we wanted to get four and a half, we would reference index two. And you can do 
mathematical operations on this if you wanted to. So if you wanted to say, oh, let's figure out what 4.5 is, and we can multiply that by 2. So we're referencing the array at index 2, and we're getting that value, and then we're multiplying it by 2. So we get 9 now. Simple. Very, very simple. Now, back when we were doing loops in PHP, so that was last Wednesday, I, I mentioned that there was another way to loop through data. And I said I wouldn't be touching upon that subject until we got to the array lecture. So, a way we can loop through data would be using a new kind of loop called a for each loop. Now, a for each loop is a little different than the other types of loops, just the way it's set up. So, to loop through this, this variable called array, we're going to say for each array, okay, so you're going to have for each, then your open and close parentheses, and then inside those parentheses, we're going to have the word, or the variable array, so dollar sign array, and then after that, you type as, and then Here's where it gets a little little tricky. We're going to create a a variable here. So every time it loops through as as it steps through the array one by one by one by one, this variable is going to hold the value at that certain spot. So let's just call it value. So for each array as value and then we can go ahead and echo out value and concatenate it with a break. So now if I were to go ahead and refresh our page, we're going to see three and then a break, string and then a break, and then four and a half, which will also have a break after it if we view the source. So you can see four and a half right, right up here. Simple. So that's how we can, we can loop through an array like that. We can also use a for loop if we wanted to. We could use a while loop. Most commonly you're probably gonna just stick with using a for each or a for. Uh, it depends on how how many steps you want to go into the array. If you want to go through the whole array you use a for each because that way you don't have to see how long the array is, how many items are stored inside the array. Um, but you can but you can just like a for or a while or a do while. You can break out of the for each loop if you wanted to. So if we found that, oops, let's let's actually move. So let's um let's put an if statement right before the echo. So if the value is greater than three, then break. So in this case, three is not greater than three, so it's gonna echo out three and string is not technically greater than 3 because it's just a string, it's just it's totally different, it's comparing a different type but when it gets to 4.5, 4.5 is indeed greater than 3 so it's going to break the for each loop and stop printing at that point. Fairly simple, fairly simple. Now if we were to go ahead and use a for loop to loop through our array we would have to figure out how how many items are in this array. So there's a function that will count the number of items inside of an array. And that function is so simply named count. So if we wanted to echo out the count, the length, whatever you want to call it, of the array, we would do echo, then the function name is count, and then inside parentheses we put our variable name, which is array. So we know there's three. Whoops. I forgot to save it. We get three. So we know that our length is three. So let's go ahead and assign count is equal to count array. So now if we wanted to use a for loop, we would start at zero. We want to start at zero because I, I said before that arrays, they start at zero and they go up by one. 
and then you want to do less than count. Since count is three, there is no third index within our array. We have we have zero as three, one as string, and two as four and a half. Three is non-existent, so you'll get an error if you try to do less than or equal to count. And then let's just increment that i variable by one. And now, like we did before when we echoed out array index at one or two, instead of putting one or two, we're going to use this new variable i here. So we can echo, and then remember the square brackets, so we have array, open and close square brackets, and then inside the square brackets we're using this variable i. And that will dereference it, so it's going to go zero, which is three, two or one, which is string, and then two, which is four and a half. And you can use that i variable, so we can echo something like this, and we refresh, we get zero, one, two. So, zero is pointed at three, one is pointed at string, and two is pointed at four and a half. Simple. Very simple. Now, say you wanted to use an array, sort of like an object, where we can we can map things to one another. When we index the array, it's automatically set to start at zero and go up by one. However, we can assign different values as the keys. So let's get rid of this array. Let's get rid of everything. Let's create a new array. I'm going to keep it the same as array. And then I'm going to open close it. And to assign a, a key to something, you can you can make it a string, you can make an integer. So let's do a sh let's do a, a string. So let's say we're gonna say name. So we want to be able to access array index at name and get the value of that. So in order to store a value under this key reference here, we want to be able to point it. So in order to show that we're pointing it, we're going to do an equal sign and then a greater than sign. And then after that, we put the value we want associated with this key. So my name is Marcus. So now if I were to go and echo out array and index it at the string of name, we would get Marcus. Awesome. Now if we were to print R that array, let's see what we get. It's going to show us that name points to Marcus. Simple. Awesome. Now say we wanted to loop through and be able to use the key and the value. Let's go ahead and use that for each loop again. So let's let's just write it out as we did before. So for each array as value. But now in order to get this key we need to put a new variable in here. So right before value I'm gonna put key, the new variable called key. And then just like we did in the array to assign Marcus to name, we would put this equal greater than reference. And so now we have access to both the key and the value at the current step we're in. So if we were to go ahead and echo key is equal to value and let's put a break so let's put some more items in there afterwards and now when we loop through it, it's going to say name is equal to Marcus so if we wanted to put more values in here uh, you could say website and then let's say I don't know for the sake of this you read it dot com so now if I were to refresh it's going to say name is equal to Marcus and then website is equal to you read it. That's that's keys in a in a in a jiffy like that. Now let's let's go ahead and recreate an array. Let's just make an array of names. So Marcus, Tom, Jerry, and I don't know Cinderella. Sure, why not? Say we wanted to ask if there's a certain item in, in an array. I mean, you might be thinking to yourself, well, the logic behind that would just be loop through it, 
check the value, see if it's equal to the value that we're looking for. If it is, return true. Something like that. Well, there's a quick and easy function that asks an array if a value is stored inside it. So let's um, create an if statement. And then the true case would be echo value is found. And then else we can echo value was not found. Now the conditional we're putting inside this, we're going to use a function called in underscore array. Very simple to remember. So we have in array, and it's going to take two uh, parameters. And the first one is what we're looking for. And the second one is the array we're going to look inside of. So let's say we want to look for the name Jeff inside of our array. So now we know, we know Jeff is not into our array here. So if we were to refresh, value is not found. But if we changed Jeff to Tom, value was found. So that's how we can easily check to see if a certain value is inside of an, inside of an array or not. Very, very simple. There's, there's a lot of functions with arrays. Um, and you can pretty much find a use for every single one of them. And it really, it minimizes the amount of steps to go and find the answer. If you didn't, you can use them to create some other sort of logic that you might need to implement into your program. But for now, we're just going to use these. And I'll show you a few more and show you what they can be used for. So, say you wanted to get rid of Cinderella. So she's not, she's not real. So we need to be able to, you know, throw Cinderella off this array. We want to get her, we want to get her off, for, off of this. So, a function that we have is called array underscore pop. And this will literally pop the end value off of our array. And what array pop returns, it returns that value it popped off. So, I'm going to create a variable here called popped. And I'm going to use this array pop function. So, array underscore pop, P-O-P. And then it just takes the array we want to pop off from. And if we were to echo out popped after this, we would get Cinderella. As you can see, Cinderella. Now if we were to print R that array and refresh, you're going to see Cinderella is no longer on this list. Cinderella now only exists in that popped variable. Um, you don't necessarily need to assign array pop to a variable um, because array is taken in by reference, so it's it's changing on the on the go. It's changing behind the scenes, and it will stay the. It'll keep the same variable name and the same reference to that variable. So I can get rid of this array pop assigned to uh, popped, and still refresh and get the same result. So you don't have to worry about popping and then assigning to a variable unless you, of course, need to use that name in the future. Now, how would you push push instead of pop? So we have array underscore push. And it takes the first parameter is going to be the array we're going to push onto. And then afterwards, you can just add as many as you want. So after Cinderella, we can add Max, and now we can add Jeff if we wanted to. So this we, this is pushing two. It's pushing Max onto the back and then Jeff onto the back. So now if we were to print our, our array and refresh, you're going to see Marcus, Tom, Jerry, Cinderella, Max, and then Jeff. And you can see that the keys are also being incremented as we go. So PHP is keeping track of our keys so we can be able to use them later. Now, most of the time you're probably not going to find yourself using a right push. Most of the time you're only going to be wanting to add one value at a time, but you might be looping through another array to add it. So a quick way to add 
a value to the back of the array is just saying array and then an open and close bracket equals and then the new value. So we can come up with, I don't know, Jasmine. And then if we were to print R this, you'll see that Jasmine is now pushed onto the back of the array. So that's the base, that's the syntax of adding one item to an array without having to type all those extra letters of array push. So array and then an open and close square bracket equals Jasmine. It's kind of like it's kind of like concatenation with an array, but in the sense it's not. So to easily add one item, you use this this method or if you really want to, go ahead and use array push. It's completely up to you. Now, say we wanted to take this array and switch it around sometime. We want to reverse it. We want to change the order um, and we want to put Disney princesses first. So what we can do we can reverse this array. And PHP has a built-in function to reverse an array. So I'm going to create a new variable called reversed and I'm going to set it to the value of array underscore reverse. And what it does, it takes in an array. So now if I were to print R this reversed I'm going to get it in the opposite order that I added each key, or value, sorry. So now it reads Cinderella, Jerry, Tom, and then Marcus. And you can see that the keys swapped as well, so 3 is no longer Cinderella. There is an optional parameter on ArrayVerse, array reverse, and after you put in the array, you put a comma, and then true, and this will reserve the keys, it'll preserve them. And so now three still points to Cinderella, two still points to Jerry, and etc. and zero still points to Marcus. Now technically this didn't reverse the array. Because if I still wanted to, if I echoed array uh, index of zero, I'm still gonna get Marcus. So most of the time um, you're really only going to use ArrayVerse for when you want to list out the objects in the end. But if you preserve the, the keys, then you're really, you're really not reversing it. You're still having the same access to it, but the only way it's appeared reversed is when you're, you're looping through and printing it, like we, we can do with the for each loop if we wanted to. So that's how you reverse an array. Now that we know how to reverse an array, what if we really wanted to sort an array so it's in, uh, say, alphabetical order or numerical order? What we can do, let's create an unsorted array. So I'm going to create a variable called unsorted. And then I'm just going to throw in some random numbers. So 9, or 9, 5, 4, 8, 1, 2. So now if I printed this unsorted array, you're going to get the values that they appear, so 954812. However, there's a function called sort, and literally you just call it on a new line. So now we have sort unsorted, and if we were to refresh our page, you're going to see now it's in numerical order. So 1, 2, 4, 5, 8, 9 very very simple on how to, s to sort an array and if you wanted to go from high to low instead of sort use r sort which means reverse sort so now if i were to refresh it's going to be going from high to low nine eight five four two one so we have sort and r sort there are many types of sort you can sort by key you can sort by case. Um, for now I'm just going to share with you guys the sort and our sort. 
And the thing is, you can mix types in here if you really wanted to. So we have 9, 5, and then let's put some names. Marcus, Bob, uh, Amanda. How about that? So now we have this sort unsorted. And if we refresh, it's going to start at the alphabet. So it's going to go A, B, M, and then sort it by number. Interesting, right? Yeah. But say we had um, this, lowercase bob. You would think that lowercase bob would be in the same or the place after uppercase bob. That's not the case. What it's doing, it's sorting it by ASCII value, and it's, it's not caring about the case. But there is uh, a function out there that will sort it with case in mind. It's called NAT case source. So N A T C A S E S O R T. So NAT case sort. And if you did that and refreshed, now it's going by binary. So it's 5 is less than 9, which is less than Amanda, which is less than Bob, and then Bob is less than. Bob technically, which is less than Marcus. So it's going in this order now. So it's going numbers first and then the alphabet. But it takes in consideration that uppercase B is equal to lowercase B. That's how you can sort with uh, multiple cases like this. So if someone, if you want to list all the users on your website based on first name, and some people put in a lowercase letter as the first letter of their name, and some put an uppercase. You would want to use this nat case sort to easily sort without caring about the case, whether it's uppercase or lowercase. Simple. Now, like I showed you with strings, you can you can shuffle up the letters inside of a string. You can do this with an array. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep the same array. Um, I'm going to keep the same variable name, and then instead of nat case sort here, I'm going to just replace it with the word shuffle. Shuffle. And like like uh, sort and r sort and all the other sorts, you don't have to assign it to a variable. It's going to remain the same, so it's going to shuffle this unsorted list, and we can refresh. It's going to be different every single time. Obviously, you might get the same result because there's only six items inside this array. But still, I'm just refreshing and we're getting different results each time. Shuffling array, that's easy. Awesome. Now, I'm going to, there's going to be three more um, functions that I'm going to share with you guys. Uh, I will include a list or a link to a list of all the array functions that you can use in PHP. Uh, that way you can play around with more than I've shown you. So make sure to check that out. Now the next one I'm going to show you is, say you have an array of numbers here. So let's create a numbers array. And let's just spit out numbers. 1, 5, 2, 9, 8, 10. So I have this array just full of numbers, and I want to get the, the, the value, the sum of, of all the numbers added together. I mean, sure, you can, you can loop through and add, add that number to this new variable we made that starts at zero, but we don't, you don't have to do that. There's a built-in function that lets you calculate the sum of an array, and it's simply named array underscore sum. Oops. And you just put in the variable name of the array. And it will return an integer. So you can simply just echo it out like it is. So we have echo array underscore sum. And then we put our array in there. So let's, let's add this up before we show it. So 10 plus 8 is 18. Plus 9 is 27. Plus 2 is 29. Plus 5 is 34. Plus 1 is 35. So if I added correctly, we should get 35. Psst, easy, easy, easy. Why bother looping through and calculating the sum of your array just like that? 
Now you might be wondering, what if we had um, a string in there? So what if Bob was back in there? It wouldn't make a difference. Since Bob is a string, it's going to know. It's, it's technically equal to zero. But you can put a string of 12 in there if you really wanted to. And that'll increase it to 47. The thing with PHP, it juggles types really, really easily. So if a value is simply all letters, it's just going to be zero if you wanted to convert it to an integer. But if you have a string that contains all numbers, and you try to add it to another number, hmm, PHP is going to know that you're trying to add these numbers together and not care about the type. So that's why we can have a string that has the number 12 in it, and then all these others that are just plain old integers. Easy. Now the next one I want to show you is say you had two arrays, so one or so I'll call one first. Let's just be array of whatever. I'll throw in some keys. So A points to apple. B points to banana. And C points to cantaloupe. Going with the whole fruit theme. And then say we have another array here. Second. So array. Um, let's go backwards. Z can point to zucchini. Oops. That's how you spell it. Y goes to yam. And I can't think of one for X or W. V, U, T. I don't know. S? We'll point S to shallots or shallot. And now we say we wanted to merge these fruits and vegetables together. So we're going to create a third array out of this. So. So now we have this new variable called array, and to merge, we have this function called array merge, and it takes in as many arrays as you want to merge together. So you can have a first, a second, a millionth, up to that, whatever. It knows it's going to merge all these arrays together. So now if I went ahead and print R this third array that contains these fruits and vegetables, you're going to see a points to apple, B points to banana. It's all in one array. So it's not two separate arrays now. Now, what if you had something with the same key in it? So let's say I had S points to strawberry um, in this the fruits array. But I have S points to shallot in the vegetable array. What do you think is going to happen? Will they both be in there? Will strawberry be in there or will it be shallot? It's going to be shallot. Why? It's because the order we merge them together, it's looking at that that one, that last S key, and it's pointing to shallot. So if I swapped first and second, it's going to keep it strawberry this time. And if you didn't notice, when I did that, it went A, B, C, S instead of A, B, C, Z, Y, S. This is because S has already pointed to strawberry. It was already in there before we tried to merge this, sh this new variable shallot. So all shallot did was replace strawberry. So that's... that's generally how you would replace a key. So if we had if we went ahead and said first of s equals something else and went ahead and print r first you're gonna see that it no longer equals strawberry. So that's how you can change the value that is stored inside of a key like that. So you just reference it by the key name, and you set it to a new value. Simple. Now the last one I want to show you is array map. What array map does is it creates a new array, but you're able to pass a function into it that it'll use that function on each part of the array, each value of the array, and return you a new array that consists of these new values that have been changed by the function we threw in there. 
So I'm going to create this array called old, and I'm going to lowercase everything. So I'm going to do lemons, limes, and strawberries. And then I'm going to create this new function, or new variable called new. And then I'm going to use the function name array underscore map. Now, array map will take minimum of two parameters. The first one is going to be a, the, the function we want to apply to each value. So when we were playing with strings, we learned string to upper, that, that uppercase is all all the letters so it returns a string of all capital letters and then the second parameter is the array that we want to change so now we have this new array which should if done correctly contains now all the uppercase values of the original array so if I went ahead and print our new like so and refresh this lemons limes strawberries it's all yelling at us so that's how you can simply immediately uppercase an array full of strings. Um, you can throw in any, anything else in there if you really wanted to. Um, yeah, so remember to check out the link that contains a list of all the built-in PHP array functions. Uh, remember the lecture notes are in the description. And I will see you guys next week. Alrighty.